Hi and welcome! My name is Julianne Cost, and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the Print module in Lightroom 3. Let's begin by just clicking on Print and taking a look at the interface. Over here on the left hand side we have our preview area just like we do in the Develop module, Slideshow, and Web modules. Underneath it we have the Template browser and you can see all of the different templates that ship with Lightroom. As I roll my cursor on top of these templates we can see a preview in the space up above. As I scroll down farther, you can see that I've actually created some additional folders in order to keep track of the custom templates that I've created. Below that, we have our different collections in case you find yourself in the print module but you want to work with different collections of images. And don't forget, you can also click right here on top of the film strip in order to access your favorite sources or any recent sources that you've navigated to. Now the first thing that I want to take a look at is my page setup and my print settings. On Macintosh there are two separate buttons here, on Windows it's just a single button. But these are really important because they're going to allow me to set up the printer that I'm printing to as well as all of the options for that printer so that when I want to print tomorrow with different images I can save these as part of my template and quickly just select my new image, select my template, and click print. So we'll start with page setup. Here I can select the printer that I want to print to as well as the paper size. I can choose my orientation and then click OK. Then I'll go into print settings. Here it's going to be really important to set up the printer settings the way that you want them. Obviously you're not going to have the same settings that I have unless you have the exact same printer and printer driver. So in my case, I'm going to set up the media type. I'm going to set my color mode to off for color management. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm going to set my color management in Lightroom right over here. So I don't want to have Lightroom color manage and have the printer color manage. It's really an either or situation. So I'm going to have Lightroom do the color management and I'm going to turn it off in the printer driver. This is a choice I'm making. It's up to you whether you want your printer driver or you want Lightroom to color manage your images. You're also probably going to have some different options down here. I have one for high speed. It's quite nice if I need to print something quickly or if I'm doing a test print. Anyway, like I mentioned, you will have different settings, but you want to go in and set them all up. And when you're finished, you'll click Save. So the page setup and the print settings are going to be saved as a part of the template. But we're not quite ready to save the template yet. I want to make some additional changes over here on the right hand side. The first thing that we should probably look at are the different layout styles here. You can see that the one we're focusing on now is the single image or contact sheet. But we do have an option to create picture packages as well as a custom package layout that I'll come back to in a moment. As far as image settings, here I can choose to zoom to fill, but that's going to crop my image, so I'll leave that off. I could rotate it to fit if this was a horizontal image and I wanted Lightroom to automatically rotate it in order to fit into the vertical orientation that I have. If I have more than one cell per page, I could repeat one photo per page, but in this case it's irrelevant. I will, though, add a stroked border. You can see that I can change the width on that border, and I can also change the color by clicking in the color swatch here. Of course, if you don't want a border, just simply uncheck that. Under Layout, here's where I'm going to determine how large I want my image to be. You can see that it made my cell size kind of a random number here. Not it made it as large as possible um, within the margin area up here, but it's not what I want. So let's go ahead and just take off all of the margins here by just setting them to their lowest amount. And as you can see, it's not setting them back to zero, but instead there is a little bit of margin here, and that's based on the printer driver. All right, but I want to print my image. I want the height to be 12 inches, and I want the width to be 8 inches. All right. Now, if I want to change the position on the page, I could grab any of the guides here and simply drag them. But when I do, look, I've changed the height of my image. So that wasn't exactly what I want. I want my height to be 12 by 8. And instead, what I'm going to drag is I'm going to drag this bottom margin here. And you can see that that will reposition my image on the page without changing the cell size here. All right, so let's just bring that up to maybe two inches there. 
and sometimes it's easier just to type that in. All right, let's take a look at the different guide options here. You'll notice that we can turn on and off a variety of guides. You can also turn them all off at once here if you don't want to see them. Sometimes I turn off the rulers just so that I can get a little bit more screen real estate, especially when I'm working on my laptop. One of the options that I really like is this dimensions option. And we can see that here, obviously, my image is 8 by 12 inches. It's not as important when you only have a single image, but later when we move to the custom cell size, this can be quite handy. And of course, all of these options here, they're just previewing. They're not actually going to print. All right, let's move now to the page settings. We can change the page background color, but I want this to print on white, so we'll leave it alone. I do want to add an identity plate, however, so I can select from some of these that I've already saved, or I can go in and edit and create my own. In this case, let's just add a little bit of text, and you can see that it's added it right here in the center. I can go ahead and scale that up or down, and I can click on it, and I can reposition it. So let's go ahead and reposition it down here at the bottom. I'll make it a little bit smaller. Maybe 20% would be nice. And if I want to, I can override the color. This is nice. So I don't have to go back in and actually edit the identity plate. If I just want to change the color, click override color. Then you can click in the color swatch here and simply select another color. I could also add a watermark if I wanted to. I think that's probably more appropriate for a contact sheet. So we'll scroll on down. We can add page numbers. Again, probably better for the contact sheet. When you're printing out multiple contact sheets, it can add a page number. It can add page information, which is nice. That will keep track of your sharpening and the profile, uh, the printer profile that you're using, as well as the printer that you've printed to. And we could add some crop marks. But again, probably not advantageous to have any of these options when I'm just printing a single image. We can also add photo information. There's a ton of information you can select from. Again, probably better when printing a contact sheet. All right, let's move down to the print job. You can see here that I'm printing to a printer. We've already set that up using our page setup and printer settings earlier. We can choose a specific resolution or we can simply turn that off. I turn it off so that when Lightroom hands off the information to the printer driver, it goes ahead and interpolates it up to the exact resolution that that printer driver wants. I do want to add some print sharpening. In this case, I'm going to change my media type to a matte paper, and I'm going to change the print sharpening to standard. If your printer supports 16-bit output, you can go ahead and choose that. And then I need to make sure that I select the correct profile. So from right here, you'll notice that I have a very small list of profiles. These are the profiles that I use most often. But if I select Other, I can go in and select any other profile that I use. So let's say, for example, sometimes I use the 7880 with a velvet fine art paper with a matte black, and sometimes I use the photo black. Any other profile that I want to add to that list, I simply check it here in order to add it. Watch what happens when I click OK. Now my profile list has grown. All right, let's go back to the Velvet Fine Art with a matte black ink. I find that gives me a better result. And now I'm ready to save this template. So I'll scroll up here in my template browser and I'll click the plus icon. In this case, we can call this one up, and this is going to be 12 by 8 inches, and it's the velvet fine art matte paper that I'm printing to. I can save it in the user templates folder, which is the default, or I can save it to any of the folders that I've already created. Click create, and now if we move down in the template browser to our single image, there we can see our saved template. So at this point, if I move to a different image or a different set of images and I was ready to print, all I need to do is hit print one. You don't actually want to click the print button because what that does is it brings up the printer driver and I'd have to go in here and I'm paranoid so I'd have to go in and check all of my settings and everything. I don't want to waste the time doing that. So instead, if you just click print one, it will simply print one copy of this image with all of the settings that you have saved. 
Okay, one just little note that I should mention. It's going to print one page because I have one image selected. But if I select an entire range of images, in this case eight of them, and I click print one, Lightroom will print one copy of each one of these images. So it will print eight pages. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other options that we have here. I'm going to scroll up to some of my contact sheets. In fact, let's select this one right here, this 4-up contact sheet, and just take a look at some of the differences. I'm still using the same layout style, the single image contact sheet. Under image settings, same as before, but under layout, this is where things have changed you can see that my page grid now has two rows and two columns so it's no longer a single one image per page. I've changed my cell spacing as well as the cell spot size and I've also gone here under the page area I've changed my page background color to black and I've added my page numbers because you can see if I select all of my images just a quick command A or, or control A on Windows Lightroom has gone ahead and not just made the first page, it's made all five pages that it needs. And we can use the arrow icons here to move through and look at all of these pages that Lightroom has created. So I've added a page number in the lower right hand corner. I can add page information and crop marks like we did before. But you'll notice I've also added page info. In this case I've added the file name. If I want to add additional information, I can go to Edit, and I could add something like file name, plus maybe I could insert the exposure or the dimensions of the file, and I can just keep adding as much information as I want. When I select Done, you can see that additional information has been added underneath each image. Now, when you do change your background color to black, that's going to take a lot of ink if you are printing this yourself. So you'll notice that I actually have changed this. Instead of printing to a printer, we can print to a JPEG file. So that if I have a bunch of images that I'm sending to my lab and I want the lab to print them with a nice black background, I can go ahead and do so. Just know that if you're printing them yourself, obviously the black background is going to take up a lot of ink. All right, moving over to some other templates that I have saved. Let's take a look here at this diptych. You can see that I've changed the orientation of the paper. I have right down here an identity plate. I have two images here. If we look at the layout, we can see they're both five inches. And you know, if I wanted to add a little space in between them, I certainly could change the horizontal cell, cell spacing here, but I could also go up here to my image settings and just cheat a little bit by adding a very slight stroke border with the color set to white. And if we go to our guides and hide those, you can see that now it looks like I've got space between them, but in reality it is actually a border. All right, let's move back to the layout style and take a look at the custom package option. Now certainly I could go in here and set up my page setup and my print settings, but I'm going to set this up to not print to a printer, but as I did before to a JPEG file. And I'm going to come in and set some custom file dimensions. In this case I want this to be 12 by 12 inches. Now I can click on any of these cells. I can tap the delete key if I don't want them. I can reposition them. And let's go back up to the cell area where you can see that I can add additional cells by either clicking on the cell and then repositioning it or resizing it. Or I can simply click on any of my images down here in the film strip and drag them into this preview area. Now if I drag it inside a cell, it will land inside that cell, but if I wanted to drag and drop it outside the cell, then it will create its own cell. One of the things that, that's important about the cells, you can see I can stretch this to any size. If I wanted to lock it to the aspect ratio, I can do that by simply clicking on this option right here. Now if I undo that and my aspect ratio is off, You'll notice that I can hold down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Window and reposition my image within that cell if the cell is not the same aspect ratio of the image itself. 
you'll also see that I can add a new page. And in fact, if we look at the templates that I've saved for my custom engine, I have a few that include two images or a double page spread. Of course, once I set up this template, it's very easy to simply drag and drop images into that area. So you can see I'm just clicking in the film strip and dragging my photo. Now here I have to be a little careful because you can see which cell is highlighted. It's a small one. If I drag it over here, it will drop it into the larger cell. So I just want to be a little bit careful there. And then I need two more images. So let's grab this one right here and maybe this one for this cell. And then again, holding down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows, I can simply reposition that within the window. All right, one last thing to mention within this custom layout. If you do have images that overlap each other, if they're not in the right order, you can right mouse click on Windows or just Control click on the Mac, and then you can change their stacking order. So you can see as I send this one backwards, it's now underneath this other image, and if I send it all the way to the back, it will be underneath this image as well. I can always just bring that all the way to the front, or we can move that around like that. So, very, very easy to customize your designs. One last thing that I did forget to mention, I will use this template right here, do a quick select all, just so that you can see that we can add a watermark here. And, you know, let's do this. Let's go to my layout. I'm going to make each image a little bit bigger there by just going, let's go to two by two, and now we can see definitely that watermark, and the way that you would add that is simply by going under your page area and then clicking on the watermark option and then selecting either from saved watermarks that you've created or by going into edit watermark. You can see that we can have either a text or a graphical watermark. Up to you, you get a preview right here. Once you've got this set up, you can go ahead and save it right here as a new preset, and then all of these saved presets will appear right down here in the watermarking area so we can quickly change those to any of the options that we want. Excellent. Well, that's a great overview of the print module. I think you can see when you invest your time and actually set up your templates, you can then save a ton of time later on down the road by reusing those templates. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.